Today on a new Sandat review, we have the Anime Heroes Digimon Wave 1. Size, scaling, comparisons, articulation, and details all coming up next. It's Morphin Time! If you are looking for Digimon items out of Japan, check out Hobbylink Japan using the link in the description below. Making an order using that link will help support the channel. Hello, this is Sanat here, and today we're taking a look at the Anime Heroes WarGreymon, Omegamon, and Beelzemon from Bandai's new Anime Heroes Digimon line. So, for some context, Anime Heroes is a spinoff of Dragon Stars, which was a Dragon Ball line meant to be kind of $20 basic Dragon Ball figures. And Anime Heroes has included things like Naruto or Saint Seiya and other anime franchises. Now, for Digimon, they're finally joining the lineup, and these were first announced back at, uh, well, gosh, it was Digimon Con. Uh, which was a virtual event, but at the end they did show these off, and I've been looking forward to seeing how these figures are ever since. Now, these are listed on uh, Amazon US as releasing in October, however, I found the entire first wave at my local Target store. Uh, they are priced at $19.99 a piece, and that is honestly not too bad considering the you know further increasing of action figure prices these days, but we have all three of them to look at. So it's two adventure-based and one Digimon Tamers-based, but that gives it some nice variety. So we're going to look at them one at a time in this order. War Greymon, Omegamon, and then Beelzemon. Alright, so we're starting with War Greymon because I think out of all of them in this wave, he has had the most toys. Uh, especially in the modern era. Got a ton of War Greymons, which will compare to all of them that I do own. So we got the Anime Heroes logo uh, right here. We've got the Katakana for War Greymon, as well as War Greymon. Uh, on the side, we've got this nice panel artwork of War Greymon, which is the one on the front. Now, this is the Adventure 2020 version. It's not the original Adventure version, and the figure does reflect that, and we'll look at that in a bit. Um, but this is the 2020 design. I'm not sure if it's unique artwork. Uh, a lot of Anime Heroes do sometimes have that, but it could be key art from Adventure 2020. Uh, on the side, of course, we've got the Katakana for War Greymon, as well as the English Digimon logo, which is the old uh, Digimon Adventure logo from the Fox Kids days. This is produced by Bandai Namco Toys and Collectibles US, so we do have the old red Bandai logo, but we also have the new Bandai Namco logo. On the back, you can see the three different figures of the wave, and yeah, it does say manufactured for Bandai Namco Toys and Collectibles America, so that's the new name for what was formerly Bandai of America, uh, which Power Rangers fans would know as BOA. Uh, so that is, you know, essentially, this is one of the earliest items I've seen that actually has the Bandai Namco Toys and Collectibles America part on it. But enough legal stuff, let's crack open War Greymon. Now, of note, when you do open this guy, there is this little plastic tray holding the wings in. You're not going to get them out of the packaging without popping the wings, but they pop off on these little ball joints, and they do seem like they are designed to do that, as they do have those splits to make it easier. And then he comes right out of the tray. Alright, so here is War Greymon, and here's the thing about these figures that I've noticed uh, as I've gone through them. They are actually pretty nice. Uh, I'm going to start with War Greymon just because we have so many, you know, we have so many War Greymons. Like, I've reviewed War Greymon multiple times on the channel. Uh, he's just a very prominent Digimon design to get an action figure. And it makes sense, he's one of the iconic, you know, mega evolutions of the franchise. And of course, you know, it's Digimon Adventure Season 1, he's kind of like, you know, the main guy. But in a lot of ways, I do really think this is one of the better ones we've gotten. So let's talk about the design, because like I said, it is the 2020 design. Why is that? Well, it's mostly because of the claws. So in Adventure 2020, they went with the bigger gauntlets and the longer claws, which matched more of the video game artwork. It's some of the proportion changes that were done for that show. And in terms of the, you know, the overall figure, yeah, it works as any kind of War Greymon, because they're all basically the same. But I think due to the color scheme, and due to the way that the, you know, the line's called Anime Heroes, this doesn't match the original anime look as much as it does the 2020 look. Which is cool, because we haven't actually had anything in the 2020 art style specifically made. And in general, I think that what's really impressive is that the only, like, missing paint detail would be, like, his thumb. His thumbnail, maybe. Um, which you can barely even notice. And pretty much that. It's got all the stripes on the horns. He's got all the stripes here. All this detail on the chest is done with plastic separation. You know, they painted down here with the red part in the middle of the silver, uh, and even the, you know, inner parts of the legs. 
The only like weird thing is that this feet are hollow, but I imagine again, because these are $20 action figures and not anything more expensive, that was just a, hey, we can cut that out and it's not gonna affect the figure because he doesn't need the feet to be that because he's actually pretty solid. And in general, uh, War Greymon figures I've got are, are kind of floppy. This guy, he's not moving. This guy is so solid, it's kind of amazing because if we compare this to, uh, we'll do full comparisons in a minute, but if we compare this to the uh, Bandai D-Arts figure that cost twice as much back when it came out like 10 years ago. This guy is just super floppy um, to where everything moves no matter what. And then you grab this guy and he's completely solid. And I have been posing him just to make sure the joints are, you know, kind of naturally loosened up. But yeah, I mean, kind of amazing. Well, one last detail. Here is the uh, the uh, Courage Shield on the back. Um, again, all fully painted. It's not sculpted in, it's just a, like a tampo graph. But anyway, speaking of articulation, let's talk about it. So the head is going to be, you know, always kind of a little restricted because of that hair in the back is like red hair, but it does move. Uh, it's all ball joint. There is, uh, I don't think the neck underneath moves. It might actually, let's say, yeah, no, the neck does move a bit underneath. So you can get him to sort of wiggle his head around. The uh, shoulder pads are hinged at the actual like shoulder connections instead of being attached to the arms, which is perfectly fine. But he's got shoulders move out, they're ball jointed so they can kind of move forward uh, like that. And then you've got a uh, bicep swivel, you got a double jointed elbow, which is pretty good, it moves pretty far. You got a wrist joint, uh, I don't know if these, oh yeah, they do. Okay, so it is just a straight ball joint on that wrist, uh, which you can see there, it's not uh, pivoting up and down. There is no alternate hands with this guy or anything, so you are stuck with the shields on him, but that's fine because, again, you know, having the option to remove those is cool, but also at the same time kind of unnecessary. Uh, here at the torso, it's a uh, waist swivel that's got a ball joint, so it's got a little bit of up and down, not so much side to side. The skirt pieces, these all move out. The hips move out, and they shift down so they can move out further. Um, so, you know, you got outward, but then you can pull down and you can go out even farther, which is excellent, and they're on a ball joint as well, so they move forward back. Thigh swivel, double jointed knee, very nice and tight double jointed knee. And then an ankle pivot that uh, it moves left and right, but you can also rotate it to move forward and back. It's, uh, you pop the foot off, it's actually kind of like an ankle joint or a, a wrist joint that you'd see on some other figures where it does move forward back one direction like this. So if it moves forward back this way, but then if you rotate it around, um, sometimes it's easier just to get in there and turn it, you can get a side to side. And I think that's pretty good. That gives them a lot of range, especially around or his like his shin armor there. So pretty good. Uh, these are on ball joints, like I mentioned from the packaging. So they move around, but the cool part is they actually slide in and out. So you actually can get some adjustments. So if you want like the shield completely closed up, you can, and you can also slide it open to get it more wing-like. Um, but in terms of that, he actually can pose pretty good. And especially considering the fact that he has all his armor plating, they did give a lot of allowances and clearances for this articulation to kind of give him more range of movement. If you want him doing like the Gaia Force pose, it can be a little trickier because the shoulder pads are hooked up there. But if you want his arms up uh, to do like his signature attack, um, you can get you can get that going, uh, which works pretty good. I think the shoulder pads do just run into things, and that's really the only problem. I think otherwise this is like a pretty excellent War Greymon figure. I've owned a lot of War Greymons over the years, and this is one of the better ones because of the allowances for articulation. Now the design may not work for everybody because I know some people do like the shorter claws and maybe you can mod those. That's not up to me. Uh, but in terms of the actual like War Greymon himself, I think he's pretty great. I think you really can't go wrong with this guy, um, especially because of how solid he is, even with all that articulation. But how does he stack up to the War Greymons of the past? So with this War Greymon, we're not worried about size. We will do that towards the end of the video. We're going to compare the size of all the anime heroes. But in terms of War Greymons, here is the figureized standard, and here is the D-Arts. So the D-Arts is based on the reference book artwork, and then the figureized standard is based on the original adventure anime. So you can kind of see that they're all stylistically a little bit different. He's almost a merger of the two of these, the larger shoulder pegs, the longer claws of this guy, but then he's got kind of some of the different torso proportions and stylings of the original anime. So it's kind of a cool sort of contrast to have. Like, you don't necessarily need to mutually pick one 
of these. They could all work together because of the different designs. You can see size-wise, he's much larger than the D-Arts, but he is about the same height as the figure rise standard, but he is a little bit bigger. And honestly, if you're not wanting to build a model kit and you're not totally, you know, it, you know, you don't, if you don't want the original anime design, you kind of like this, this is honestly probably your better bet because you don't have to build it and it's a little bit cheaper than this guy. I do really like this one still because it does give me that original anime uh, design vibe, especially with some of the colors like uh, this part is gray here where it's white here, where it's uh, more outlined here. You know, some of those different color changes are a factor to consider. So when it comes down to it, if you're looking between these three, I don't recommend the D-Art because this thing's old and floppy as we've established. But in terms of, you know, sort of, let's let's take him out of the debate. If you're looking at the anime heroes versus the figureized standard, it's going to depend on style preference because they are definitely differently styled. And I like that. I, I have both of them, but I don't feel like I'm repeating the same figure, which is pretty nice. And then in terms of other War Greymons, here's the Digivolving Spirits War Greymon, and here's the Shoto War Greymon. Uh, not really anything else besides just kind of neat comparisons. The Shoto was listed as a 2020 design figure, but he still had the shorter claws, he still had the different uh, torso articulations, so he actually more matched the original adventure design than the 2020 design. Uh, this is much more on model to that. And then, of course, the Digivolving Spirits has to turn into an Agumon, so he takes a lot more design liberties there. But you can see that he's actually in the Digivolving size, because this is also the same size as the original. Putting that in as the Digivolving one, they're about the same size, if you're wondering there. And then here he is next to a trading card, because why not? Here, two trading cards. Look at that. Look at that, see? He's taller than the cards. Next up we have Omega Mon, and yes, uh, for some reason, even though this is designed, I believe, for the Western market, usually Bandai would use the dub name, so that'd be Omnimon. Instead, we do have Omega Mon on the box. I've noticed this with Anime Heroes, uh, the Naruto figures, they list, uh, you know, family name first, given name second, uh, sort of like a direct translation, so it says Uzumaki Naruto as opposed to Naruto Uzumaki, and I think it's because of the, the Katakana styling. I do know that these also are sold in parts of Asia, so maybe that's another reason. But it is interesting, this is actually branded Omega Mon and not Omnimon. Once again, I believe this is artwork from Digimon Adventure 2020, just with the way the eyes are done and some of the other proportions. Uh, on the side, we've got similar styling. And on the back, it's pretty much the same back on all of these, showing all three figures. Uh, let's get this guy open because I do want to see how is his articulation going to work out. As I was opening him, I noticed there's a floating plastic piece to separate his torso from his cape so that the red doesn't get onto the white of the plastic, and that is excellent. So next up we have Omega Mon. Now this is probably one of those things, I, I was just talking about this in the Magnamon video, how much the Digimon movie impressioned on me. I love Omnimon, Omega Mon, whichever way you want to call him, because he's just, he brings back a lot of good feelings to seeing that movie in a theater. Um, but that being said, I do have quite a few figures of Omni Omega Mon now where I didn't have any as a kid. So I've, I've made up for lost time pretty, pretty much. Um, he has been used probably a little too much between Try and Adventure 2020, but they did spare him in 2020, which was nice. He was only in a couple episodes. Uh, the other cool part is that this is the 2020 design, so much like with War Greymon, it's a little bit different than what we've had. Uh, in terms of details, he's got kind of um, a more narrow chest and more narrow shoulder range than I think we're used to, uh, so he looks a little bit different. Uh, he does have those bigger eyes, which is nice. Uh, the waist has been thickened up a lot, which is probably a good thing. And then, you know, we got the... the torso, the crotch area here, um, which again, it's a little bit wider, a little bit thicker than what we've seen. His toes are also a little shorter than, than usual. And I say usual because mostly we've been getting figure arts. Uh, cape is really nicely done. It's all white on this side, all red on the inside. It's not cloth, but it's not going to get in the way. It kind of hangs nice and even on the back. Uh, and that's pretty good. Now there is a couple issues with this guy uh, compared to the other two. Uh, and that's and it comes down to, all right, so check out what the heck's going on here. Um, so it's because of the way he's put into the package is a little weird, but essentially the cannon doesn't remove, neither does the sword. And I think if they had, it would have helped in packaging because you see that, you know, this part of the, the guru head is a little bit like off kilter because of the way the packaging slightly warped it, um, which is kind of an issue. And then looking over here, you see we've got, you know, the, the gray heads lined up for the most part. Uh, if we look straight down, it's a little bit off. But yeah, the blade's all kind of uh, crazy. So the thing is, like, it's got a tray slot for the blade to fit into, but it wasn't quite fit in on mine. And I didn't look at the other one that I saw at the store uh, too closely. But, you know, I'm going to have to, like, heat this up, 
try to get to straighten out but uh, by not having these removable and then having separate sections in the tray for them it did sort of lead to the possibility of warping because these are softer plastic of course these are you know they have a four plus on the box but yeah so i think that's like the only issue with him that i have is that the uh, sword got easily bent because of the packaging design and you do see the digicoat is painted nice on both sides which is really impressive and then in general he's not missing any paint details from what i can tell now articulation wise He's a little bit more limited than more Greymon due to the design, but he's got a nice ball jointed neck. It does have quite a bit of movement left and right, and there's no paint scraping happening there, which is good. Shoulders are ball jointed, and they move out like this. They can 360, because there's no restriction there. He's got a bicep swivel. He does have a single jointed elbow in the middle there, which works pretty good. Uh, the wrist does turn, and then of course the blade is static. Uh, on the Guru arm, you do have this, so you get a moving um, shoulder piece, which is nice for adjustment. Torso wise, it's ball jointed at the waist. Uh, it doesn't look, it looks like there's a movement up here, but there's not, uh, which is fine because I think it actually makes them a little bit more stable. Hips move out and then they pull down, which I actually think is the first time we've had pull down hips on an Omegamon. Uh, and these move all the way out. So you actually, he has more splits range than pretty much all the other Omegamon figures, which is pretty cool. They move forward, they move back, they rotate at the thigh, they bend at the knee, and then they also rotate at the knee. So you got kind of this motion going on. And then the feet aren't hollow on the bottom, which uh, I forgot to mention, but you can see the plastic separation. That's fine. Uh, we've got uh, ball jointed. So it's ball jointed. It's not like War Greymons where you can rotate it and move it in a different direction, but that means you can get a full a full uh, side to side and a little bit up and down. So you actually, in reality, while he does have maybe less articulation than the figure art, he probably has a better range of movement uh, than some of them because they went for more ball jointed stuff as opposed to something more complicated. Because you can see, you know, the only thing causing him not to crouch down further is that cape. Um, but in terms of like, can you actually get the cape to help, you know, sort of balance him out? Because uh, the cape is kind of stiff. Uh, if you want to balance him kind of in a, a, a sort of floaty pose, uh, like he could do something like this. Totally doable. Because that cape help balances him out. Cape helps balance him out. I know English, I promise. Uh, the really cool part about this guy is that while he is simpler, he does have a lot of good, you know, range of movement. Which I think actually really benefits him. Uh, you can have a nice cannon pose there. You can get him into a, you know, winding up sword pose. I, I think the only real things that I have a complaint with is the packaging sort of warping the weapon arms. Um, I just pop the uh, ball joint on the hip, uh, push it too far. And that's the other part too. These are four plus, so they do have, they're not as they're not as fragile as something like a figure art. You can actually play around with them more. Um, but if you want to have him kind of crouch down, ready to like swing the uh, the Omni Omega gr Gray Sword, uh, whatever you want to call it. You, if you want to get him crouched down and ready to like swipe at something he totally can so he's a little bit more restricted than more Greymon, but i actually still think he's pretty solid overall it's just the weapons not being removable is probably my only complaint okay so i do have a few uh omega mons it's not like i did an entire video comparing all the omega mons uh here is the figure arts our war game version uh which is going to match color wise because of this having the more anime colors here is the d arts which is going to match a little bit more stylistically wise because they did take some of the reference art some of the anime and then make uh the 2020 version so you can see the 2020 version does have a bit of a different torso uh posture like the reference book sort of inspired d arts uh whereas it does have the larger more anime eyes as well uh so looking at these you know this was 2010 this was 2015 or 2016 it's 2022 i think he actually stands up pretty good against these all things considered he is not as thin uh as some of these because they didn't need to make him thicker for you know just making a more solid figure that's not a bad thing now of course how does he stand up to what i declared was the best omega mon the premium color sh figure art and while the premium color does blow him out of the water like color wise the cape wise it's it is a more premium item it also was like a hundred dollars so let's just not forget that but as a 20 dollar figure this omega mon is actually surprisingly pretty up there i think also having the more saturated anime colors does give it a benefit uh while the more premium colors do look nicer as a figure uh so you know it's kind of a little bit of a contrast once again just like with war Greymon, i don't feel like this guy is replacing this guy but just complimenting him as a different version of omega mon and then for fun we have the shoto omega mon and the Digimon figure collection Omega Mon. Uh, looking at these, you know, this is just fun comparisons, but there's been a lot of Omega Mon figures lately where back in the day there may not have been as many. And then finally, trading card comparison. He is shorter than two trading cards stacked on top of each other. Anyways, I just like showing off my card collection, I think. <laughs> So 
We're gonna round it out with Beelzemon. The reason why is not just chronological order, but Beelzemon has not had a figure in a very long time, uh, especially not an action figure. I know there was a model kit recently, that was the amplified version, but he hasn't had an actual action figure since the D-Art. So I've been really looking forward to this one. Uh, this does seem like new artwork. I don't remember seeing uh, Beelzemont in the style. It's kind of 2020 style, but it does look really nice. Uh, it does look really nice on the side as well. And of course, on the back, same back that we're used to. It does say Beelzemont, not Beelzebmon, so they aren't necessarily using Japanese names 100%, um, but it is interesting. That we, yeah, it's weird that we had Omega Mon, but not Beelzebmon, but maybe, you know, they were thinking, let's just go with the Japanese names, but we're going to keep changing Beelzemon because the farther we get away from the name Beelzebub, the less retailers be mad at us but let's take a look and see if he was worth the hype spoiler alert he was worth the hype let's talk about him so here is Beelzemon. Now this is one of the uh, first anime style Beelzemons we've had because we don't have a model kit, we don't have anything else. There's no Shoto figure. Pretty much the only thing before this was the D art, which of course we will compare to. A Beelzemon as a character is one of my favorite Digimon characters. I think his arc was fantastic. Uh, he's one of my favorite characters in Tamers. And I really, 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 really like this figure. Okay, so taking a look at the head, uh, as we can see here, he's got the red eyes, which is appropriate. So all three eyes are painted in nice and neat. Uh, his face is painted. I also so I guess I didn't mention this. These things are painted and they're painted clean. Like there's not paint slop everywhere, which is really nice to see. You can see they sculpted in the jacket. It is uh, sculpted to the torso. It's not a, a separate overlay, but that's fine. It still has that depth to it. It needs all the bands are there. Uh, maybe some of these buckles could have been painted, but honestly, I think it looks fine even without that. He's got the brown paint on the arms. Uh, it's not super shiny silver. This is again, going for more anime colors. And yeah, I mean, look at the, the detail on this guy. He's pretty impressive. Uh, the boots are caved in a bit, but that's fine. It's not affecting anything. He's got the uh, holster on his side. He's got the weird wires on his back that are kind of meant to represent his blast mode wings he doesn't have yet. Um, there's no, there's probably not going to be a blast mode uh, part set, but I could see them retooling this into blast mode. He's got the tail here. Uh, which it's kind of pre-posed, but that's fine. I don't mind. And of course he does have the bandana on the arm, which is really nicely done. He just looks incredible. And I do want to talk proportions real quick. He is super, super duper lanky. That is exactly how Beelzeman should be. So the head, uh, the head moves uh, left and right, up and down. It has a little bit of a neck pivot. Uh, that's kind of what's impressive about these is that the neck does pivot forward back a little bit. So you do get some nice range of movement. It is going to run into the collar. It's just the nature of the design. Shoulders move out. They're ball jointed so they can and get some extra range forward back. He does have a bicep swivel, a double joint elbow that goes completely up to his arm like that. That is great. Nothing's running in there. Uh, the wrists pivot forward back. They rotate and they are ball jointed as well. Pretty nice. Torso, uh, it's kind of left, right, sort of ball joint. Hips that pull down to move out. They move forward, they move back. The thighs swivel. Knees are double jointed. Pretty good range on that too. The ankles are just like War Greymon, so forward back. You can turn them and they're left, right and also ball jointed. And then to top it off, the tail is on a ball joint for extra posing. Now, like I said, this guy does come with some accessories because unlike the others, he sort of needs them. For example, Beelzemon has his two guns. So these guns are iconic to the character. He does have them in this evolution and you can actually fit them into his hands. Much like the D-Art, they are kind of a loose fit. Uh, they won't necessarily stay if you bump them around too much. But in my experience with the figures so far, they actually do hold pretty good. Uh, as long as you're not like touching them, they're not going to go anywhere, uh, which is pretty nice. So you can get them posed like that. Of course, you can also holster the gun. So this one naturally fits right in the holster, no problem. This one should go on the back between these wires. I remember the D-Art having a really complicated swap out system. This one, if you if you really want it back there, which I, I would just leave it off to the side, to be honest. Um, you can kind of, I kind of figured this out when I opened them up before there we go uh, you can sort of push the wires around and it necessarily it won't necessarily stay in there super solid but it's holding pretty good uh, so we're going to leave it in there just to kind of demonstrate and then to top it off uh, this is kind of a nice surprise he actually comes with swappable hands so he's got fists uh, the fists here pop on and so now he's got hands so he can gesture like he's shaking his fist at somebody or something. There's no open uh, clawed hand or anything, but I do like the fact that he does have options. Uh, the War Greymon and the Omnimon didn't really need those options just because they don't have you know traditional hands. But for him, it's nice that he's got fists because it gives him more range of movement and you can kind of have him in a, a brawler sort of pose like he's going to fight somebody hand to hand as opposed to the guns, which is pretty sweet. Uh, honestly, pretty excellent stuff. So yeah, I mean, in terms of figures, 
I, I definitely think this is my favorite of the wave. I think he's definitely the strongest. Uh, part of that does help the fact that he's not had that many articulated figures to compare to. But honestly, all three of them are great. But Beelzemon takes the cake for me. And that may be character choice, but he honestly just seems like he has more going on at his price point. All right, I keep talking about it. Here's the D-Art. So the D-Art, I think, for the time... Uh, oh, I just knocked the gun off the back. For the time, the D-Arts was fine. It was very much that old figure art style where they're very lanky. Of course, he is, you know, I, I mean in the torso more than anything because he's supposed to have long arms. But in terms of, you know, he's based on the reference book art, so there's more silver on him than the, than the more brown tones and in general i think one of the biggest changes is of course the head sculpt uh this is much more closer to the anime where this one is very much the reference book and video game artwork and yeah the dr does have some extra painted detail like the buckles are painted more silver but i really do like the anime heroes a bit more another big benefit is uh dr does the same thing the war Greymon does where it's super floppy and he does the same thing that war Greymon does where he's not i mean pretty much all i got there uh, in terms of like you know is is the actual 20 dollar figure better than the old 40 dollar figure from a decade ago yeah kind of is i just like this more i mean i do have a preference towards anime designs but when it comes down to it this is just a more solid figure like he's you know yeah he's rated ages four plus not 14 plus but this guy you know he can't even hold his guns very well like this is this is it on a good day that that gets loose pretty easily so yeah i mean when it comes down to it i do like the anime heroes more also the the guns have the little red dot on the top where they don't hear so there you go one more extra paint app um so while you know the d art would have been nice if they actually released the bike if they actually released the blast mode parts still kind of mad they didn't um especially because i showed them i do think i like the anime heroes one a lot more and then to add to that here is the digimon figure collection beelzemon in terms of beelzemon figures uh, i guess we'll just put them all out here these are the three I have. Uh, there is, like I said, an amplified model kit, but I, I really do like this Anime Heroes figure a lot. Um, so honestly, you really can't go wrong if you're looking for a Beelzemon, go in for the Anime Heroes one. I don't yet have the fancy new Gallantmon Dukemon figure art, but here's the old D-Arts. In case you're wondering size-wise here, I actually don't mind it too much. And of course, here he is with four trading cards. I really am just showing off now. So now that we looked at them all individually, let's do some comparisons to some other figure lines just so you get an idea of how these stack up against other toys from other lines as well as some other Digimon lines. One of the easiest comparisons is to Marvel Legends, a standard 6-inch action figure line from Hasbro that has pretty much become an industry standard in terms of size and scaling. Here they are with a McFarlane DC Multiverse figure, the higher scale end of the modern action figure industry. Here they are with Anime Heroes on the left, Dragon Stars on the right, which are technically all part of the same toy line. Here is a non-Digimon SH figure art to compare to. Here is War Greymon alongside Figure Eye Standard Magnamon and Metal Gururumon, which I previously reviewed on the channel. Here is Omegamon with the SH figure arts Imperial Dramon Fighter Mode. And then here is War Greymon with the Figure Eye Standard Amplified Machine Dramon. And then lastly, here they are with a totally random Nintendo Switch game that's got no relevance to the video whatsoever, right? You should totally check it out, though. It's pretty good. To the commenter that commented asking if I could compare the size of Magnamon to two cards in my last video, here is two cards like this, and here is two cards like this, and here is two cards like this. So overall... Wave 1 at Digimon Anime Heroes are pretty solid. I really like these. 20 bucks a piece, you really can't go wrong with any of them, honestly. My favorite, of course, is Beelzemon. I mean, that may just be to lack of other Beelzemon figures, but honestly, he does pose the nicest. He's got less, you know, stuff blocking his articulation, which is pretty good. So overall, I do recommend these if you are looking for them. I found mine at Target. You can get them on Amazon US for sure. Maybe other retailers. Check around and see what you can find. If you did enjoy this, leave a like down below. Leave a comment. Tell me what you think is the best figure of the wave. Also, be sure to hit subscribe and notification bell for future videos on the channel. Not just Digimon, but all kinds of other stuff that you can check out now. Be sure to check out Hero Club at hero-club.com for Digimon news and more. Uh, check out Darkon on Twitter at Darkon633. He made the awesome uh, trading card transition graphics for this video. And also be sure to check out my awesome graphic designer on Twitter at DarkClaw643. And until next time, this is Sanat saying goodbye.